Let me try this and see if it works. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Big Story Podcast. I'm Alex Morrissey and today we've got Tom Mueller with us. And if you don't know who Tom Mueller is, go grab a comic book, look at the top of the front page, and there's a good chance Tom had his fingers dabbling in them from time to time. Hey, Tom. Occasionally. Occasionally. Hi, Alex. (laughs) How are you doing? Once or twice. I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Once or twice, the man, it's, it, in fact, his middle name is Masthead. It's a very little known fact, but. Really? Yeah. It's, yeah. you shouldn't, you shouldn't spoil those things in public. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I didn't read your writer all the way through. <laughs> oh man. So Tom, uh, yeah, Tom is a, an amazing uh, graphic designer and uh, the comic industry is all the better for it that he actually is paying attention to it. <laughs> so, um, I'm totally thrilled to talk to you. Um, As I said to you before that we started recording, um, I was at Heroes Con this weekend and ran into a few beneficiaries of your handiwork, such as uh, Jonathan Hickman and and Jordy LaHoop. Um, And these guys, you know, I think, you know, you know, not verbatim, but Jordy was like, more people need to know about Tom. So I said, well, that's going to happen tomorrow. That's very nice of Jody. We're still like, I'm still waiting for to get started on the third volume of the weatherman. Yeah. Um, that's been, that's been, an, that's been an amazing experience, like working, working with Jody and, and Nathan on that book. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, I think that was, that was the thing I need to swivel out of go. the, oh yeah, there you have it. Like nice. it's in the background of my studio as I well. See it. Uh, right next to your, back into next to the purple block of your thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um yeah and it's a it's a it's a really really great design um and it's so interesting so i you know full disclosure i've been a designer and an art director for 23 years i guess yeah same so i was a penciler uh and writer at you know marvel and dc and other companies in the 90s and uh in the late 90s I ended up uh rooming and studioing with dave johnson oh and wow Dave uh, was teaching a drawing class at an advertising design school and just didn't want to do it anymore. So he asked me if I would take the class over after I didn't screw up, you know, sort of substituting a couple of times. And the school was happy to have me. And who knows why? And then I ended up um, teaching five classes a week at this school. They they handed me nice. Um, advertising teens classes for concepting the ad handed me like you know typography classes and i kept every time they would offer me this i'm like you do know i draw superheroes for a living you know like that was response <laughs> to them and they're you know they would always keep adding these classes to me but in that sort of two plus year teaching sort of cycle i kept going like I'm just more excited about the subject of design than I am the subject of comic books at the moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it was the problem solving aspect. While comics is all problem solving, but it's like a very different sort of form of it. It doesn't have the breadth of opportunity that design offered, you know, because you were like, hey, you can design these just nuttiest things or the most simple things. And the simplest things are the hardest. Yeah, to design. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I just. It, Bend off in that di- distance. So I'm super psyched to get to talk like dumb things with you. Oh yeah, it's it. it I kind of came from 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 an opposite angle into into comics. Like you know, you kind of came from comics, went into design. I came from design. I mean, I'm still in design. Yeah. But that was kind of my way into comics. Yeah. And I always I used to always used to used to joke when I when I did like lectures and 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 go to conferences and and do talks I would always say I'm going to mess it up now. What did I always say? I said comics got me into design, but design got me into comics. Yeah. Because I used to like you know, I've been I've been a designer since like pretty much same same amount of time as you like late late 90s kind of yeah. thing that's when i when i started and i would go you know i studied i studied design in in college and then i went into um kind of digital design late 90s and that kind of gave me um kind of a platform to learn things 
Mm -hmm. And then I would go at the same time, like draw comics, because that was still kind of like, you know, this this bubble in the back of my head, like I want to be a, I want to be a comic book artist. Mm -hmm. um, and I used to like during college, I used to work at my local comic book shop and they had a gallery. So they started like exhibiting the work of myself and and like some other close friends because they had like an, a, a free spot during like the, the, the summer holidays. Like usually they always invite like, you know, professional artists, like, you know, they'll have like Dave McKean and, and, and Charlie Adlard coming over um, in the late nineties, like, cause they were all based in the UK. So it was yeah. easy to, to have them over to, to, to Antwerp. And, you know, they had a free space during summer. So they launched this, they they built this whole exhibit on the back of like basically four guys. Um, <laughs> they call it like young talent, and it was basically like all these like college artist wannabes. Oh yeah, I'm, one day I'm gonna become a comic book artist. Like just hang hang their like basically schoolwork. And towards the end of the uh, the end of my 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 time in college, someone spotted my work, and he was like, "Oh yeah, my friend, he's like a creative director at a local agency. I think you guys might hit it off." That's how I ended up at my first job as a designer. Wow! And 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 then I started to learn that all the things like you know late late nineties like CD ROMs, websites, <laughs> intranet presentations, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and I then used all that that skill to start designing the website for my local comic book shop because I was okay. like, oh guys, I can I can use Flash, I can do these cool animations and um and then that led to me finding a job here in in London, moving from Belgium to to the UK. And remember back in the 90s, like late 90s, early 2000s, like it was cool when people had websites to have a list of links of mm -hmm. like uh, these are I, these are my buds and yes. like, these are these are these are these are sites that i think are cool so by extension yep. my taste is cool and so this site is also cool and i had like a list of comic book artists and one of them was ashley wood and i had created this thing on the comic book web store website that i was doing a kind of like featured site of the week and i had put his name on it and then emailed him saying like Oh, hey, big fan, blah, blah, blah. I, I featured your site. And then he got in touch and he was like, oh, cool. I like this. Do you want to do my site? Oh, and we started right. talking and we started kind of like we became friends. And that was basically my my the way I got into into comic books by doing comic book websites. Yeah. I, even to this day, when the, the ability to make a website is truly in the hands of anybody. And I'm not, you know, yeah. I mean, you can, have a, you can have a passable website, you can make one in a few hours with very yeah. little effort. And there's so few comic book artists who have websites. Like, I, yeah, 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 it's still sort of like throw a message in a, in a, you know, in a bottle and chuck it into the ocean and hope somebody, you know, picks it up. It's like, it's so, I'm, I'm baffled by it, but, you know, yeah. you know, it's me being a systems thinker going, why, like, why is this, this not being utilized? It's there. Go yep. for it. Yeah, so, yeah. You were, so you were sort of kind of that, I guess you were building sites at that sort of just after that one, that way, you know, web 1.0 kind of arrow, you know, right after the, the dot-com bubble explodes. Um, yeah, you know, I was, yeah, I came in, I was, I was still in that bubble, like towards mm -hmm. the end of the, of the dot-com bubble. Yeah. And it, yeah, it burst Ooh. while I was, while I was, um, yeah, a year in here in London, it oh, kind of all awesome. went. Yeah. I, so I was, I was in Atlanta. I was teaching at, at an, an ad school in Atlanta and I'm like, I got to go back up to New York. So I was, had been in New York for years and I said, let my apartment, I'm like, I'm just going to go back up to New York. So I, t you know, I tell my friends, I'm, so I go on up to New York. I'm like, I'll just do some interviews, some, some agencies that I like. And you know, see you know, see what it looks like. So I go up there. This is before the the you know the bubble pops. And so yeah. I'm meeting like with Paula Scher. I'm meeting with all these people, like all these great agencies, like all up up and downtown. And they're like, yeah, absolutely. And you know, it's funny because like Sagmeister had just closed his studio to do some projects. Like he was like, oh yeah, yeah, his he his totally cool. He was totally cool. But but he's like, he's like, I'd love to meet with you, but like, I'm shutting the studio down for like two years and working on a pro on projects. I'm like, all right, cool, you know, no big deal. 
And so yeah. I'm like, all right, great. There's all these job opportunities. Tell my buddy, I'm like, hey, get out of the apartment, start packing things up. And the the bubble popped in between my my trip up there, like in May and into like August or whenever it was. And yep. it was yep. like a ghost town. I remember I was, I actually, the reason I moved to the UK was because I, I got a job offer from uh, an American digital agency who had like, they were headquartered in Washington, DC. Like they were headquartered in Bethesda, I think. Okay. Yeah. Um, actually, they were the sister company of Bethesda, the video game oh, okay. developers. And so it was, it was quite a big deal. And we had like a team of like, kind of like who's who um, in like digital, like cool digital design back in the day, like that period. And I think one year, I think it was 2001, I went back to Belgium for Christmas. I came back in January and like half the staff was gone. I was like, oh. what happened? And like some, some of the guys were like, oh, you're one of the lucky ones. It's like, what do you mean? Yeah. They were like, oh yeah. And that, that's, that, that, then, then that was my first um, uh, kind of moment. I, I realized like, oh, so that's how American companies fire people and let people go. It's like on the day, it's like you out, yes. here's a box, get your shit, move. Um, and then it happened to me uh, a, a couple of months later and then the yeah. company kind of shuddered and yeah, that was it. Yeah, it's pretty amazing how quick it happened. I mean, that and that industry was just in this gold rush. Everyone's like, woohoo, and they're out there with their pants oh, yeah. like, everywhere, but there was just not enough, you know, to support it because people didn't know what to do with it. Um, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It wasn't until these things happened, really, that they were able to sort of like start getting that sort of A B testing kind of like really down and figuring out how to like. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of like, in my experience, it was at least like, I think things kind of were quiet until 2000, I think around the time that Facebook and Twitter kind of started to to be a thing. Because I used to do a lot of websites for, for record labels and, and, and recording artists. So... I was doing anything from websites to like skinning MySpace pages and all that kind of stuff for, for labels. And then it was like, oh, we need a Facebook page. We need a f Facebook apps for a thing back then. And, oh, yes. you know, all these things. And, and then all of a sudden social started to grow and then people became less and less R labels were, were, were like, prioritizing artist websites less and less it was like yeah yeah they've got their they've got a facebook page they've got a twitter feed they've got instagram and they'll have like one page on the on the label that yeah. has like tour dates and that's right. it and then so i kind of pivoted in different kind of areas in digital like hopped around different agencies but then in the meantime i was kind of just slowly having a side hustle in comics yeah. And that went from, from doing websites with Ashley Wood to doing design for his books and then hanging out on, on forums. Um, I hung out on like um, Mark Millar's forum and that kind of yep. got me in touch with like some other people like Liam Sharp, um, yep. started working yep. with him. And, and it kind of slowly started to snowball from there. But I was always like, comics was always kind of like a side hustle for me and, and kind of like, I would dip in and out, like mm -hmm. do a graphic novel here, do like a limited series, like four issues there. And that was kind of it. Well, I mean, so like, I mean, your work, there's, I mean, it's, you know, and, and I'm not trying to knock anybody else who's in, in the business, but your work is far more sophisticated in, in overall sensibilities and has a very strong, you know, um, tie to, um, you know, sort of, the formative Swiss work um, and a lot of print is sort of historic yeah. quality yeah. work. And I mean, you're, but you're, you're, you know, you're citing all this, you know, this, this sort of like protozaic, you know, uh, you know, like digital era of, of, you know, the online experience, but, you know, I would not have said like, Oh, I'm, I'm thinking like, Oh, this guy's just been doing, you know, publication work for, you know, two decades and is, you know, knocking it out. But it's really interesting to hear that you were able to, live in that digital environment, but still keep, 
I mean, or, or develop wonderful sensibilities towards. Yeah, the... it was. I mean, I, I I studied like my when I when I studied design in college. That was a kind of quote unquote traditional design education, like basically okay. print. We had like one one guest lecturer coming in like in the late 90s and going like oh yeah this is uh this is this is the internet and then showed like some really like basic like oh, look it's an animated gif and we were like yeah this is amazing this is you can do stuff like that and yeah. it looked like no and it looked like nothing else like you know like all the all the kind of like classic design references that that we were being being fed by 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 school and and everything so that kind of opened up a lot of of kind of thinking in terms of like oh wow we can actually you can break the rules and you can you can design for screen yeah and i think like throughout my my kind of my career i've always even even I think today still it's the, the the gap is really closing, but there used to be a very distinct like you're you're like a print designer or a brand designer, you're a digital designer. Yeah, very and much. the aesthetic the aesthetics were really different. Yeah. And that has that that has been narrowed because now you see a lot of like brand agencies and digital agencies doing both. And they're kind of like as I think it, it, it always should have been like that. And so my background in, in kind of graphic design, capital G, capital D, I kind of want to, when I started to, to work in comics, I wanted to inject that kind of sensibility mm -hmm. into, into comics because I think, like personally, I think the 90s were really bad for comic book design because it was oh, that yeah. kind of explosion of digital technologies and like, Oh wow, we can we can color on computers. We can we can design on computers, it's and it's radiant. like I, Look at this radiant I, I did the same thing. Like the first time I I discovered Photoshop, I just I rem, I still remember this really well. I had downloaded, which took ages back then, in <laughs> on the school computer and the school network. I had downloaded a piece of promo art from the Ghost in the Shell anime. Oh yeah, the movie, yeah. Uh -huh. and I just sat there for two hours opening it in Photoshop and going through every single filter and going like, whoa, this lens flare makes this thing look amazing. Yeah. Adding me metallic sheens and like gradients. And I think that that's what happened in, in, in comic books as well in the nineties was like, we can do all this. We can make it look real. We can yep. do like, we can make things look metallic. And I think that kind of, I think we're still seeing a lot of that thinking echoing through design today in comics well, and i think we're, we're like auto tune to music like it's like those exactly yeah, yeah yeah and and i think when i kind of got the opportunity and i think i was really lucky because you know working with someone like ashley wood he's like he does his own thing he's very he's very smart he's very intelligent he's got a really good taste Mm -hmm. I mean, he's got an eye for design. I mean, he also comes from a design background. Right. I think a lot. I think a lot of comic book artists have studied design at one point or another. Right. They're not like I, you know. I don't see. I, I don't see a lot of people that come from a purely fine arts or illustration background that get into comics. There's always at some point someone has been involved in some kind of design. Discipline. Even, even if, I mean, I would almost say like even if you didn't, um, because you because everything that we look, touch, and interface with in life, yeah, unless it grew out of the ground, was designed. So mm -hmm. we have you know we we're we're engaged with design sort of just by default in life. But as a comic yeah. book illustrator, you need to be able to recreate all these things and make exactly. sense. So you have to have some sort of affinity and understanding for like, cause you kind of have to build it again, you know, with your hand. So yeah. I think that it gives you that sensibility and you're right. I mean, listen, lots of, I mean, a lot of comic book artists have a wonderful, like just baked in quality to their, their design quality to their work. It's just yeah, yeah. impressive. So yeah, I mean, but I, I mean, it's, it's so, you know, it's super interesting to me because like, you know, I grew up in a, a very supportive arts household. Um, 
And, you know, I'm sure to all the lament of my mother, it was comic books that I loved the most. And she was really supportive, but she never, ever, you know, sort of got off the, you know, or she died on the hill of not liking comics. Like she was like, I just don't like it. <laughs> And what she didn't like about comics, she hated the word balloons. She hated that stuff because yes. she that was it was unsophisticated. And and it's so interesting because like I think in the back of my head for many many years, I've always been thinking like we need to figure out how to you know it, it level up the sophistication of the communication quality of a comic book. Mm -hmm. And I I mean I know that like you know, balloons are a default and they are a thing, but there are solutions that you can work around, you know? Oh um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's not just using four different typefaces. It's just having the right solution. Um, and it's, it, it's so, so when I was looking at your work, it's funny, I, I think like a year or two ago, I went to the comic book store to do some, some research on, on, um, on uh, mass sets for comics. And I was walking around taking pictures of just ones that I felt were interesting and, you know, the, a bunch actually ended up being yours, and they did. I it wasn't. It had nothing to do with this, but they also were all white. There were so many white logos on the covers of books, which is a real like. It's a super hot trend right now with the comic book covers, and and that's really a sophisticated approach to doing. You know, a print. You know, you know, element. Yeah, it's just yeah, saying yeah, yeah. we're going to do white and. Um, and I like how the, like the, the whole industry is sort of at least embracing sophistication or even if they're doing it not well, they're still trying. Mm. So. I think so. I think, I think it's, it's a lot of people that have been entering comics, I would say in the last decade, come from slightly different backgrounds and they come from, they come, they, they are, visually a lot more informed i think especially mm -hmm. because you know we've had online access for the last what 25 30 years yeah so i think that starts to i think that starts to 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 like get into people's minds because they yeah. see like they've got access to everything they see how design can be across yeah. anything from video games to films to music packaging to magazines sneakers digital yes and it's like all this um kind of influence and information mm -hmm. that then when people start creating comic books that's gonna be they're gonna be like oh yeah i saw these cool gig posters i want to i want something like that or i love this kind of 3d animation of whatever i saw on vimeo and i want to have that aesthetic and i mean like even like you just mentioned like jonathan hickman like jonathan came from um an architecture background and like design background and he kind of has pushed that as well throughout all his work yeah. so i think if enough people start doing stuff like that it starts to seep into the wider kind of culture i think and in the wider approach of how you can do how, how you can do comic books did you feel i mean did you feel like a bit of a like a secret weapon early on like for the people who you were <laughs> working with? i mean um, think i mean really think about it like the amount of free like free range access to people who have like real design chops working with you on a project, you know, out, you know, outside of like, just what the publisher is going to do. That's a, that's a huge thing. And it doesn't, it didn't happen a lot. No, but I think it, it I mean, it does happen a lot in, in creator own comics. I mean, that's where, that's where I basically, I started out in like, I kind of went from like one extreme to the, to the, to, 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 to the other. Sure. Like working, working with, you know, Ashley, Ashley Woods, that was, I think when he like we started talking when he was go about to start his pop pop series at IDW <laughs> and IDW was still very young at that time as well. So there was a bit of like Ash can do whatever he wants and I'll just write on the back of that and kind of like when he asked me to 
could you could you do like some book covers did you do some design i would just go oh fine i'll just do and kind of start started to inject the kind of design language and 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 approach that i was using on his websites the kind mm -hmm. of like that minimalist very modernist approach and because ash has a very healthy audience both within and and outside of the industry people start to take notice it's like oh who's that who what's that name doing there yeah. um they start hanging out on forums and be a bit of a loud mouth and kind of going like well well i know how to design blah 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 um and then you know start working with with liam sharp on his mentor uh um um kind of initiative and like do those do those anthologies and those those two graphic novels and then met ivan brandon online and he was kind of like ivan ivan is a really close friend and he's always he's he's a really good collaborator because he allows me to just go crazy but he know he he understands design and he's a good sounding board as well and there's a lot of push and pull sometimes when we're working together because and it that's i think that's a that's a that's a healthy relationship and the same with um when i started working with alish caught on zero yeah i think both ivan and alish have been you know really amazing collaborators and kind of just letting me free and kind of within the boundaries of the sandbox of their books to kind of try to be as innovative as possible and then when those books reach their audience and reach people within the industry you get other people going like oh could you i love what you've done there right you mind doing that here and so that was kind of, that's kind of how i've slowly built up a body of work yeah no it's i mean it, it's i mean i you would ha, you would just have to think that like anybody who is looking at other people who they admire and they're they're saying okay like i can't draw like that person you know my way of doing the things is my way but yeah, yeah. but i can find out who did the who did the design for the book and see about getting that because i can at least get someone who can you know bring that sort of element into the work that i that i'm producing and exactly you know, and, it, and I think the interesting thing is, is that you wonder like sort of on an exterior level, like if someone's not really versed in design, they just kind of go like, I want that on my book, but they mm -hmm. don't understand that like, they're not going to get that. They're going to get their own thing. And it's going to be, you yep. know, because, you know, it's like when you get a client and they're like, you know, and they're like, you, you, th you, you send them the, you know, the, uh, the proposal and they're like, this is everything we want, but there's a comma in here that we don't want, you know, and they, you know, they're yeah, upset, yeah, yeah. this is too high. And they disappear and then they contact you like within a year saying, hey, we'd love you to do the project because they they you know, they went and got somebody very cheap and they ended up getting a really poor product or yeah. legal issues because of said product they received. So it, it's it's interesting because when you you know, when you are designing something from the ground up, it is, you know, that suit that is made just for you. And it's exactly. not exactly exactly. Yeah. So. um uh huh. I, I'm gonna. Th I'm just gonna throw up a couple of covers and. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I mean, it, it's. I mean, and this is. So here we are. We're doing graphic design. Like Straight. I know. Like I know. We're. You know, I, I. I can't control putting the pieces on the side. Like us on the side. I know. We could just do this. I <laughs> yeah. So, but like, I mean, I. I love the fact that you brought, you know, in you know, form into the letter form yeah that was i mean i think i think that was that was kind of and i don't want to say it was an easy one because it, it, it's not really but when 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 i was i think ram told me about the book a year or so before before it was all kind of gelling gelling yeah. together and then when he you know started giving like more more pieces of the puzzle and and the title and obviously the title is is related to that miles davis album yeah and then i thought and, and of course a lot of the references that we were kind of looking at for for the design were you know classic blue note covers so i thought like why not like try and design the cover like an album sleeve yeah. and create design the logo to 
kind of reference or or um what's what's a better word uh reference reference the the the, the blue tone logo mm -hmm. yeah blue notes blue note logo and kind of like play with that as as a as a kind of graphic device and use use those like you know use the bar and the circle to yeah. to then build out the whole language like you know within the book we kind of play with those geometric shapes as kind of music rhythms mm -hmm. as as kind of like chapter breaks um but that was that was you know i, I think i had designed the logo first and then um anand had created the cover art and then we kind of played around with that to kind of make everything kind of click together and then the way that the credits are laid out and and like the little kind of pseudo in stereo kind of graphics yeah. that you yeah, see absolutely. like yeah. kind of kind of like making little little references and kind of kind of homages to that kind of classic era of of, of album cover design well, and it's, I mean, it's, and to me, it's very gutsy on like, you know, the, the, the book creators to say, yeah, this is a logo that we want. Like the logo, the logo is so sort of on point, you know, for this as a title, because it's giving up a ton of real estate, you know, in a, in a, in a form factor. The best. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, it's like, you know, because like, you know, okay, well, what if we take the top bar off? Okay, now we can make the logo bigger. You know what I mean? Like all, mm -hmm. these, all these conversations would happen, you know, in from the marketing team. You know what I mean? They're like, yeah, yeah. logo larger. And, you know, so you're, and so like 50% of your logo is not the actual title. You know what I mean? So the, it's a very bold effort on the on the end of the you know on your end and on their end to say yeah that's what we want but the, i think the solution is so on point that it would be you know the wrong answer to do anything else to that um so yeah i think i'm 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 very much in the in the school of thought of the design will kind the design fits the story and yeah. not kind of Oh yeah, we need to. We need to. The logo needs to be this this big. It needs to be positioned here. It needs to look like that. Um, and I think, especially in creator-owned books, you have that flexibility to kind of work with work with the creative team to to kind of establish a look. Like I'm working on a project now, um, and we're kind of working. We're kind of working in a way that I think is the correct way of working where you get your you get your your idea you get the brief from the from the creative team what the book is going to be about uh you work with the editors to kind of like establish references and and this is the moods that we're going for yeah. and then i will start designing the logo work up different solutions like the logo as a standalone element then how it works on the cover yeah and then the artists will go back and forth. They'll sketch, do placements. We'll work out what the what the kind of the 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 the, the skeleton is going to be of that of of the series. Mm -hmm. And then once everything is is kind of decided, like this is what the logo is going to look like. This is what we're going to do with the covers. Then the artist can go away and create the actual cover art. Yep. And then everything kind of falls into place, rather than what is still a lot of like what, what is still like uh, the, the the pervasive way of doing things is where designers get a cover and then it's like okay wh where do i play and 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 artists will usually leave the top third of the cover kind of sure. free ish because that's the kind of the the, the 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 historic kind yeah. of way of doing things yeah and sometimes it's like sometimes it works sometimes it would be nice to have more freedom to to work with design and and art in combination but i think yeah there's 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 ways like if you have enough time and you, and you get get involved early enough you can create something really cool i think well that's and it's interesting because you said you said you said two things you I thought about something when you were talking and then you said something that sort of makes me have to ask the question, but like, so you were saying that like, 
you know, you, you know, you get, you get whatever you get from, you know, in this case, you get what you get. And then you started developing, you know, the, the, the mass set for this. But the question being is like, Oh no, um, no, no, that cover, that cover in, in particular, that was, we worked out everything and then Anant went and created the final oh, no, piece. No, no, so it was, yeah, yeah. I know, I know I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to misquote you. What, what I'm saying is like, in this respect for this project like how much did you have awareness of what the project was before you started designing so that's because like oh okay you know, like, gotcha. because like in you know in design as you mentioned before you know we get a brief you know here's the brief for the project and the clients put together mm -hmm. everything sort of they put together the they answered the questions of the list that we sent here are the things that we need to know before we begin this and if yep. there's a visual reference, we get the visual reference. If there's a historical references, we get those. And we put that all together and we, and then we create our development. Maybe we'll go and do moodscapes for or brandscapes or whatever the thing you use, send yep. those over to them, get that language going and develop, and then start sketching and developing some early models, then apply those to some sort of environmental elements aspects, and then say, okay, are we, you know, are we working in the same world? But you know, a comic book has to be written, then it has to be drawn. And then, you know, let's say it has to be colored. I mean, these are very not short periods of time to be able to really get the visual idea of, of it. And so how far into the process, just we're going to talk about this one here, were you brought in and you were able to kind of think? Um, from, from the start, pretty much. Okay. I mean, because um, I, with with a lot of your creator-owned books, I'm brought in at a stage where the comic is, say, writer and artist have decided they're going to work together, and we have a project, we have the idea, we have a name, and we have a bunch of concept art mm -hmm. and the big idea and we have the we have the big outline we right. have beginning middle and end we've got like this is what the story is going to be about and that's where i like at that stage i come in okay. so um i know what's what's required i know what the vibe is going to be i mean then i kind of it, it's it's like a call and response kind of thing then yeah. i go away and go like here's a, here's some here's a mood board here's mm -hmm. a select here's some sketches what about this and then we're kind of um then we kind of go back and forth like yep. when when um when i did drifter with with ivan brandon and nick klein this book um this book it was very it's like we're we're like mentally connected yeah um it, the whole the, the initial the initial kind of rough idea was one of the ideas and and i hope i remember correctly it was kind of like it's the lone drifter that wanders into like a, into an outpost town like mm -hmm. kind of like a, not unlike the kind of the format of a western like the lone drifter comes into this frontiers town doesn't know who he is like how he got there and then things start to happen and everything else but it's set in space and the frontiers town is like this like mining colony on this weird planet and then all this like this magical world building can happen so a lot of the initial the initial design work and sketches that i did was this kind of like more grungy not i i don't want to say like it looked like a western book but it was that kind of like it was grungy type block blocky grungy right. type just, kind just of right. distort yeah 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 to kind of and and nothing really nothing really hits and like all three of us were kind of like no that's not really doesn't work with the art it doesn't work with with the, the the story and then i started doing some more research and then i found this um thing called the bodo code which is like a front runner of morse code okay and like kind of looking at that kind of pattern and because it's basically it's it's dots on a grid yeah and i kind of took that and thought like it would be nice to kind of because it's it there, there is a part in the story that's also about like trying to retrace messages and signals okay. so i kind of use that as the as the grounds 
like as, as the ground layer mm -hmm. created that created the grids of basically ones and zeros like on and off dots sure. and then you start to like create it uh, a bespoke typeface that's all built out of dots and then started to pull that apart then started to use like squares and kind of use start to use that as a whole pattern that runs throughout the book for like all the credits pages any kind of interstitial or chapter page would have that kind of that pattern so you and, created a whole typeface for the yep. yeah great yeah, yeah beautiful and so and so throughout the run i think it was like we did 18 issues for four paperbacks the logo evolves through those 18 issues like that first issue cover mm -hmm. that you just shown it's basically just dots and you see kind of things started to break apart and then over the course of each volume we start to add things into the logo and so by the time we hit <clears throat> issue 18 it's like a fully drawn kind of Keys. logo like fully drawn letter shapes as a kind of like he's like all the all the holes are plugged oh, like I get, yeah. all the mysteries are solved yeah. the, so the, so that was solved. yeah yeah and and i mean that 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 could have only happened by working really closely with with ivan and nick on yeah. on developing that whole that whole language and that whole kind of how can design become a part of the whole story and the packaging and and yeah. and, and the marketing and be something that a people notice but at the same time it serves a story and it doesn't become this thing that someone has just slapped on yeah and it's you know it's it's interesting because like so many like like you couldn't really do that logo with such taste in a film because a film is an event you yeah would, you would have to animate this thing and, and you know, so the answer is given within a very narrow sweet sequence of time yeah yeah, yeah. In this respect, you've stretched out this story, this typographic tale, over the course of like a year and a half. Yeah, and that's like you know, so that's a that's a long that's a long game, you know. So maybe television you could get away with that, but I, I mean, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, like. But the thing is, the beauty of it is that if people aren't really closely paying attention, but they have all the issues, there's going to be that aha moment where they're going, wait a minute, wait, wait, and then they're going to put it all together, and it's going to be this yeah, yeah, yeah. reveal. Yeah, that's, yeah, I, it's that, and 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 the use of color as well. Like the first issue starts in black and white, it's just white. Yeah, and then by issue eighteen, we're full on using color across the full kind of design design language for the book. It's a, it's a, it's a it's a that's a beautiful it's a beautiful beautiful thing to put into the comic. Yeah, I love that. That's great. So I'm, I'm I I've been holding off on this, but I'm, oh wait, so wait, I, I'm gonna I'll, I'll move now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, get ready there's a move. cover coming. Yeah, there's a cover coming. So following the blue note thing and the structure that you had here, and maybe now we're talking yeah. about sort of formative development structure, but yeah, so similar to the antithesis of the blue the the blue and green is the days of hate covers mm. so you create this great you know very like heavy duty you know headline kind of you know punch you in the nose kind of um you know title but the system isn't one that it's like fixed it doesn't have to be done in, done in one way this has to be done in one way because it tells yeah. a visual tale and i love that you okay cool and then it's so swiss because you've got your grid and you're laying everything off of the off of the titling it's just it's you know it's nerd heaven so um <laughs> it's it's great i mean yeah. and, and it, so but i love the mo so the you know the, the sort of the two tone cover you know black and color was yeah. that like, was that so that was was that like an evolution sort of like in the development they're like you know we just could just do it this way or did they want to go with that initially i think i think we wanted to to be like super minimalists and okay. and kind of and, and 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 a little bit like think about basically the whole the whole idea like a um daniel did only black and white pieces for the cover so all the color was my my decision Okay. like i had to come up come up with that and our whole idea was to reference like basically protest posters and 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 protest kind of flyers yep. 
because because I mean the book is kind of like it, it, it is quite political and it talks about like life in life in the US in the near future. I think the book came out when Trump was just I think I think it was just after Trump had won the presidency or something like that. So it was it was very much in that moment of time and kind of I mean I think it's still <laughs> with everything that's going on and kind of looking at this book like yeah it's all like everything is kind of going quite right yeah. and i think that's that this is kind of like the story what what is really like um addressed in this in this book and in this story so the whole idea was like we want to make a book that looks a bit da not dangerous but certainly like this is this is this is a statement yeah and especially on i think the what what we did on the back covers of this this issue was like something that i've done on a, on a few books especially with alish is to use the back cover as the kind of the end credits mm. like yeah. you know we we're just talking about like doing tv yeah. and like you know animating a, a, a thing over time and i i like the idea of using the back cover as a kind of end credits of the episode yeah Freeze, freeze up a lot of space as well to sure. like use 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 the interior for story and on the back of issue one we as usual we list the title of that issue and the back of that one was america first and so mm -hmm. people that pick up that first issue have days of hate america yeah. first and yeah. that was kind of and we, I, I remember getting a few, like people tweeting, kind of going like, "Yeah, people are kind of looking weird at me when I'm reading this, like on the <laughs> on the bus or like in public." Um, and I was kind of like, "Yeah, that's kind of what we what we, or at least what I kind of wanted to get out of it, the kind yeah. of poking poking the bear." So wait, I I, I, I just realized that like we we're we're a bit geeky. Uh, no, no, you know, I'm not trying to offend you, but I'm, I'm a total, what? Geek, but, yeah, I, <laughs> but, um, maybe we should, might want to just briefly explain what a grid is in Swiss style is to people who, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Wait, hold on a second. I'll maybe just pull out. Let's here we go. How about this? book? Are you a fan of this book? The, uh, that one there. Oh yes. Wait, do I have yep. that one? I mean, Macro and micro Typography by Kunz. Yep. I love that book. I don't have it. I used to yeah. I used to have it. Or, yeah. Grid. What is a grid? Oh, what is a grid? A grid is the um a grid is um the underlying structure of any uh page screen canvas that you are putting your content on. So it's the underlying structure. Usually it's columns and then subdivided in horizontals like baseline grids and what that does is allow you to put everything in a fixed rhythm and organize content and then start organizing your images your copy your headlines your subtitles your body copy any kind of small page numbering that kind of stuff and then keep that logic repeated throughout your whole book publication website app whatever so everything is kind of it's a skeleton of any kind of design and right letter. so a great a great example of that in the comic book language would be a keith giffen comic book so keith giffen does oh, yeah. nine panel grid his yep. comic books are predominantly nine panel grids and it's not to say that keith doesn't break that grid um, but that's what it is. So it's three, three, and three, and that's yeah. how he formulates everything. And he make you know, make one big one here and then have two and then three at the bottom or any yeah. competition thereof. Yeah. So yeah. that's, so that's kind of the, the simple breakdown. And then when we're talking about a grid for oops, pushing wrong buttons here, but like, so if you look at the, the D nice, good move, you've got good reflex, yeah. you know, so and you're looking at the D here and draw a straight line up. Mm -hmm. uh, has justified chapter 11 of 12 to that edge of the D. Yep. He's lined up the the names of the creators along with the line of the H, the H and the hate. So, and the mm -hmm. O has these, what does that say? I don't know. Oh, the price. The, 
<laughs> the the image the image i is lined up with the with the o of off and then the price is right aligned uh with the with the f i think okay. I, no not really is it i can't i can't uh, remember i think I, I think i kind of like purposefully broke like the grid on on one or two occasions but yeah. um it's basically i think it was a four column grid that i used on that book okay um and then just basically have the credit block the, the 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 chapter in credit block kind of always placed on one of the columns and then offsetting the the title so it's either like days of hate or days of hate or like you know kind of moving that around but trying to make sure there's always like a visual connection like vertically where where all the elements kind of stack up and another great thing about using a grid is what it does is it creates um, sort of a subconscious expectation in the viewer slash reader's experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, that, that way they can kind of sort of understand what's coming and not be too surprised. But when the grid is manipulated, those mm -hmm. surprises ha tend to have a larger sort of impact because they yeah. are sort of challenging the structure of what the greater entity is. So um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's Definitely. it's it's a beautiful it's a I mean it's it's a beautiful thing. That's so when you hear someone say Swiss style, they're typically referring to this grid system that was developed yeah. you know a hundred years ago um, plus. Um, so let's just move on a couple more because like you have you have you have two very big hits. I'm looking, man, you're fast. So um, this is great. This is, now this this is pretty recent, right? The motor the motocross work yeah it's i can't remember it, it's it's been it's a it's it's a few years now i yeah. think um when did the series go on the hiatus 20 mm, i want to say 2017 or 2018. okay yeah yeah it's cool i mean it, it, it's i mean for me it's got that whole like i don't know it feels like you know i think you referred ghost in the shell earlier like there's like i i don't there's like yeah. that that you know i mean that guy to me is one of the greatest people ever to to grace the world of Shiro. that guy is oh yeah brilliant on every level and um so anything i can see that is like harkens to it but i love i love the structures that you built within the letter forms so it's really that was that was a really fun project because we kind of did it wasn't just a logo they were really um they were really after a complete kind of visual language because we you know in 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 the comic itself for the people who haven't who who've not heard of this of this book it's kind of set in the near future um motor crush is a drug that motorbike racers which is kind of like the massive thing in in that kind of in that world like every like like motorbike sports is like taken over everything it's like more popular than than That's football fun. soccer basketball like anything and motor crush is neat illegal drug that that um motorbike racers feed their bikes to boost them at like illegal kind of like fast and furious style oh, okay. like yeah. night nighttime racing uh races and like the, the 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 main character of the book is kind of involved in in that drug and and etc 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 um but because the whole like the whole world and like the whole story in the in in the series is kind of permeated through that motorcycle kind of like formula one culture mm -hmm. i had to design that kind of on-screen language of like because there's like a lot of racing happening so you've got like this kind of like broadcast chirons basically yep. appearing throughout the book and I kind of built that, built out that whole visual language and then pulled it out to the covers and especially into the the, the designs for the, the 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 paperbacks who were kind of designed as you're reading like a live broadcast it has like all these kind of like you know cnn style formula yeah. one style kind of like broadcast graphics and the the actual logo that was an interesting one because the, the the team had already be, I actually came into that book a little bit later when the whole thing was already well into development and they had a um they had a logo that was 
kind of like this, but not. Right. And so it was a kind of take what they have, redesign it, refine it, and then kind of yeah, build out a whole a whole a whole system around that, which is you know again not not unheard of in like you know the design industry no. outside of comics. It happens. It happens so many so yeah. many times when 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 clients come to you with they maybe they already have a brand and like you need to build an identity around it or we've got something that's only half finished we don't know how how to take it further and then you do so like for example like on on i can't remember the name of the character that has the that's looking at, at the reader but mm -hmm. the wgp that's like the world grand prix brand in the in the book and that logo was already designed. I kind of redrew it, refined it, created its own thing. But that's kind of like, like Babstar has a really good eye for, for kind of design and aesthetics as well. So a lot of the, the visual language was kind of like gleaned from, from her input and then me kind of going in, refining it, making it my own and making a thing that could kind of work through the book. That's great. I love that. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and that's, that's, that's a design business, man. It's like, Hey, you know, Hey, we're UPS. We've been using the same logo for like yep. two years. Can we get a refresh? And, you know, yep. but we can't lose the package. We can't lose, you know, like, so that, you know, there's your mandatories. Exactly. Get exactly. to work now. Um, yep. And so now this is, I mean, it's this now, now we're in a, this feels much more of like a, a structured back to a structured environment, yep. like where you're yep. creating a visual language on, and you have your information, you know, sort of containers. Um, yeah. 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 But, which, you know, is very, um, you know, that's something definitely the, the, the sort of the digital world embraced far more than print did, like only really mm -hmm. sort of like, um, you know, you know, progressive print magazines would do sort of containers on covers. But um, yep, yep. Yeah. But I, I like how you said, like, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to make blocks. We're going to work within blocks. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was kind of this the design for this series was kind of from a suggestion from uh from trad who wanted something that sat in the same kind of field of vision of say the american um the epic comics of akira mm -hmm. oh yeah absolutely frank, yeah, it's a, yep yep frank frank miller's ronin mm -hmm. um and a couple of like, like that kind of like 80s mid to late 80s um prestige design aesthetic yeah because i think there was there was a period in like the, the the late 80s early 90s when like you know comics like marvel and dc would do like you know prestige books sure and and there was always and then you could see where like the design was always like a little bit like pushed a bit further and looking at kind of with the bookstore market in mind like we're, we need to design this to appeal to a wider audience a, a, a more permanent audience it's yep. not like a floppy that disappears into a long box after a, a month or two this is going to be this is going to be like a, a an evergreen seller so it was with that kind of in mind and i mean looking looking at like trad's art and concepts and and the whole look of the book it was kind of like yeah this looks like a kind of trad doing this kind of post-apocalyptic anime kind of batshit energy mm -hmm. but let's do something that really complements and contrasts that by doing something that's really like bold but minimal yeah and then it really plays off like i think the 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 cover of the of the paperback for for the new world like that this beautiful illustration and it's really just so much going on in in that piece of art so it makes sense to then have a trade dress around it that's really kind of visible but it makes the art sing yeah i mean i guess it, it, compositionally it's you know it, it's not competing and it's sort of it, it's sort of giving a a stable platform for it to yeah create. yeah showcase and i also feel like that kind of this kind of the presentation and what you were citing earlier remind me of the um you know the belly bands for for books you know like yes, Japanese, yes like that i think that really was what that akira dress was going for was that belly mm. band approach yeah um, yeah 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 that's cool i love it i love it 
And then let's see, I think we have these out of order. Hold on a second. There we go. There we so, go. I think I rad. Yeah, rad's the word I'm going to use for this one. This is rad, man. <laughs> this was again like working with Ivan. We went back and forth on what that logo because I mean the name was. It's a cool name. It's a cool title for a series, but how do you design that? Because yeah. it's like okay, just type two later. And I think I did because I think the book was announced at at. Um, can't remember which comic con it was it might have been sdcc but mm -hmm. it might have been it might have been new york comic con i don't know i can't remember anyway but i had to do a promo piece uh for for the book and i had just used like i think i used the same typeface i eventually ended up using for the new world kind of like just type vs italicized yeah. made it big bold boom done but I was like, I can't use it. It's not going to work for a cover. I want to do something, something a lot bigger. And then we were kind of like, let's make the logo as big as possible and like <laughs> make it like it takes up the whole third of yeah. the, the. Let's do that. Yeah. Um, and 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 it kind of like, especially with with like Esat's artwork, it really, yeah, it really lent itself to that kind of really in your face. But it's still super minimal, but it's kind of like, whoa. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Like I, the logo, the logo takes up like almost half of the cover. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's, that's how it should be. <laughs> yeah. And it, but um, because it, because it fits the, it sort of fits the vibe and the, you know, and it's, yeah. but, it's but it also, it just blends right in. I mean, because yeah, yeah, yeah. we're not, we're not, because it's not a fill, you know, it's not a big white logo up there, you know, just no. saying, hey, look at this. It's like, it's fitting in with it, with the, in the environment. Um, exactly. Hopping back here and here, there are not enough. There, there. I, I want more tall title uh, typefaces in the world. Just calling out there all type makers. We need more. Okay, just saying it. Get on it. Somebody make that. <laughs> um, no, it's. I mean, I, I think that. I mean, I remember when I first saw this, I was like, oh man, what is? I mean, it, it's such a great solution, and uh, and you're able to kind of use it, it all. Yeah. Awesome. And 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 again, I mean, this this versus and and Motor Crush were kind of similar in a way that for this series, I also had to develop like a whole visual language and kind of like an in-world brand system. Yeah. Um, because in this story, you've got basically in the far future, it's kind of like politics are like international politics are being solved by. A team of gladiators like the tv show yeah. it's basically warring teams factions go against each other on live tv as a kind of like as a game show and so we had to design like all that kind of like broadcast graphics like advertising and whatever um and then again use that system for the design of the actual covers as well so you're kind of when you pick up a an issue or or the the collection you're kind of all right this is the start of the, of the live game wow. um and then for these like basically i did like you know the the the, the main covers were all like painted by by esad and yeah. then for we did like a series of kind of design variant covers where i basically just took a piece of his pencil art and then designed like basically Ivan was kind of like, yeah, just do the covers as you would like them. Mm -hmm. Like if you had like, you know, uh, um, get free reign. So that's when we kind of, yeah, let's, let's cover the logo. Let's cover the cover in the logo top to bottom and then start to play with like how it interacts with the art and then lay in all these like little design elements. It's, 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 so, it's so fun. I think it's great and, uh, much needed. And that's going to bring the weatherman back up because I love it um it's very cool i love i mean i like container blocks i love them i think i think they're yeah. a great, they're a great tool i think this is one of the old, is the, one of the few books what's that this is this is the trade right this is the trade. Yeah, that's yeah. the yeah no wait that's the cover for issue one volume two okay but it basically like we've got the same we've got the same trade press running across like all the single issues all the trades it's basically just that block and we just swipe we just swap out colors to to kind of like 
to fit the art. That's great. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and then here we go. All right, we get a position now. <laughs> Ooh. All right, so here Never it is. Never seen this before. Never, ever. So I mean, this puts you on. I think everybody's map. I have to believe. I, I yeah, I think so, and I have to. I have to thank. Um, I have to thank Ivan Brandon for that, and Jonathan Hickman, um, because one one night uh ivan texted me like oh i gave jonathan your uh your email he he wanted to get in touch with you and then the next day jonathan emailed and he was like uh well i'm doing this thing are this you interested <laughs> are you interested in working on this thing um uh, and yeah yeah so that's um, the thing that's the thing so I have a couple of covers here and then we'll, I think I have like sort of a bunch of the, uh, the workup stuff that you, you, you did for this. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, now first off, just on the exterior is, this is so absolutely different of an approach to a cover, you know, for a dress dress, you know, trade dress for a cover. I mean, it is, mm. I mean, the word minimal really doesn't even sort of begin to approach this especially for you know the biggest comic book publishing company in america you know this is this is a big gutsy move but that was that was um that was that was um jonathan's idea yeah. he wanted to um he wanted to really i mean the, the, i think it's been it's been written about like many times but jonathan's whole idea and the whole idea of of the relaunch was to really tell people like we're doing things differently yeah. and this is not going to be a storyline in an ongoing x-men title or it's not going to be this crossover story that runs across a few titles um the whole idea was you know they canceled or they they, they didn't cancel they just ended all the x titles um that up until like 2019 mm -hmm. and then the idea was okay we launch with house of x and powers of 10 and we need to we need to we need to show that through the branding as well so we 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 the first the, the, actually the very first thing i did was just design that x logo that you just flashed on screen yeah. before like that one um that was it that that was it that was the only thing i did because then they had to um announce it i think it was at um uh, uh um was it emerald city i think so okay um and so once that was established then okay now we need to start designing the covers and it was we're doing house and powers yeah and then we're going into we're okay. launching with six books and then the six became more and more and then the, the whole line started to grow but once once we we had done the logo the next step was to do the house and powers trade dress because you know they they were immediately coming and it was i mean in that case the art the art was already done so we had that cover from from pepe and then um rb's uh rb silva's cover for 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 powers mm -hmm. um powers of 10 and so it was it was a kind of interesting um project it was, it was an interesting problem to solve because i didn't i i wanted to create something that had like a trade dress that encapsulated everything so creator credits and and issue number and and issue price and tie that all up into into the brand language because mm -hmm. then we had to you know we had to come up with like what's going to be the new typeface for for like the line um and so then we i did like i did quite a few versions of of that design it was like a, a, like an elegant like kind of like a lozenge like a pill shape mm -hmm. and then it like bigger smaller like position it everywhere and then we kind of landed on on that and then we had like the we developed a color system where each issue like house one house of house of x1 
powers of 10 one, they use the same color, but inverted. So one is um, white text on red. The other one is red text on white. And then we go like that through, through the six issues of each series. So um, it's like blue and black, green and black, yellow and black, and then purple and white and like, a, 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 I think black, black and white. Okay. Um, I think the last issue to kind of signal that each yeah. book had like they're connected. It's 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 I mean, I mean what I think I mean it's you know, I'm sure it's probably like you know having people's heads spin, but the the ambition for what we you know these ephemeral pieces you know I mean the, these are these are floppies they're going on a shelf they're going off a shelf I mean we know that there's a huge yeah. collection factor these are anticipated at a high level. And we all know that these things end up getting collected in trade, you know, trades. And so the world is a very different world than it was in 82. But the point being mm -hmm. is this piece of ephemera for many people who buy these things. And, yeah. uh, and the, the, um, the level of sort of interest and investment that's being put into this um, rather than saying, okay, well, here's the X-Men logo. We're just going to slap it up on the top and off we go. You know, it, it, there's, there's a real sort of, interest in developing something that's going oh to be, yeah you know the touch points are there um you know and you know looking at like what you, you what your approaches are for all this oh there you are um i there's my hand there my hand um <laughs> you know and i mean i mean i mean just look going back here looking at this like what yeah. i what what is really really interesting we, you know we have the symmetry we have the collective quality we have pushing and you know we have pushing in, pushing out elements going on, but we have division. Yes. You know? And like that white stripe in the center, the value of that white stripe is so incredibly powerful for the message. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, I mean, there's, there's, I've, I've had so much fun with like people trying to, to decipher what the, ex, like the lyrics what, of what, what's happening, what's happening, what's happening in the, cause I mean, one of the, I think this is one of the few the few notes i received from from marvel and jonathan was that we need to have some kind of historic through line with the with the main symbol with the main brand mark because it needs to be updated and modern and new and kind of make people go like oh oh hello what happened here but it still needs to be like oh yeah, that's the x-men yeah, and so it, it, we had to kind of work with the circle kind of holding mm -hmm. device, but then every, anything within that. So basically, uh, it, it's exactly like you say. Like one of the ideas was there's the division. There's the kind of is it mutants versus mutants? Is it mutants versus humans? Right. There's that kind of guys. But at the guys. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, there's also the kind of like the way that I wanted to draw the X as well. It's kind of like snippets of a, of a DNA helix helix. Oh yeah. So, yeah. so there's yeah. kind of, there's, yeah. there's, you know, the play on the mutant gene, that mm -hmm. kind of, that, that kind of approach. So I tried to come up with a design that was like very modern and future forward, but at the same mm -hmm. time, there's like, oh, people, you can either read like, you know, adversity and, 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 and two sides either coming together or fighting each other, right. pushing against each other. But it also looks like, a, like DNA. Yeah. No, that absolutely does. Yeah. The second you say that, I'm like, oh, that's absolutely the, the, the helix, just a side shot of it. It's very, so, it's really, very cool, man. It's really cool. Um, it's the FedEx arrow. <laughs> oh my God. I know that was, that was like, that, that was the great, that's the, you know, that's like the, the, what the magic trick of the, de, of design 101. You know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. The teacher says that and then everyone's head explodes and you know, you did your day, you did your job for the day. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, it was, I mean, like how much, I mean, how much corporate sort of involvement was this? I mean, like, what, like, because this is, this is, I'm pretty aggressive in the terms of what typically is done for, you know, a, you know, titles, especially the biggest title. Um, mm. So, I mean, was there a lot of like 
corporate fear or was there a lot of or, or were they did they play it smart did they involve every did they, did they at least keep everybody who had the yes no power engaged early enough to where they weren't surprised and then upset um to be honest i don't really know too much about like what happened behind the scenes at marvel but i i, I like to believe that um jonathan was very much championing a, a, a kind of like using design as an element in in the re in the relaunch um beyond beyond like the thing i just said like you know the notes on we need to these we we just need to hit these marks with the x beyond that it was actually quite quite open and i haven't really gotten all like I mean, I mean we're we're now like what um almost three years in yeah. now yeah um i've never really had massive notes from marvel or from the 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 x office the editorial team um most of the notes are all things that are kind of like make sense or things that oh you need to make sure we 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 hit that mark and you know we need to we need to keep things in mind and you need to think about that blah 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 but design like in terms of aesthetics and design i think we we were able to establish what the line looked like from right. the get-go and and then everything else is just this kind of evolution of yeah. of that design and 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 that system because you know once i had done the x um the, the initial brief was basically design the main mark yeah design uh we come up with the logos for mm -hmm. for the launch the launch series design the book packaging so mm -hmm. we're doing we're doing series and we're doing this anthology style which turned out to be like these books the dawn yeah. of x series which then became uh is currently reign of x and then i think in in autumn it it changes into trials of x but it's basically this anthology style series and for this um so everything is based on the shape of that x like yeah. all the design like even the series covers uh, as well they have like that the, the big color block at the top of the of the books is a part is a leg of that x basically yeah. like turn 45 degrees but here um these books it was really interesting because the whole idea here is that it's not necessarily the individual title or the individual issue that's that's on show it's the x the x-men brand mm -hmm. um because this is this is like anthology style series so if people buy this from volume one to however long it will run they get the whole x-men line collected in trade paperbacks that that vary from six to six to eight to ten issues i think okay. per, per volume and you don't really miss a thing because it's all chronological so right. dawn of x issue number volume one has all the first issues of the first six series and it goes through one through six and then we started to introduce other titles into i say we marvel started to introduce different new titles into the line and then so then at the moment we're at uh, i think I, I just delivered the designs for reign of eggs volume 13. and then you get things like it's got sword issue six wolverine issue 20 um trial of magneto issue two but it's all like if you read it it all follows chronologically like yeah. you know in, in the back of each x-men title um you've got the kind of like the reading order list like yeah. this is this is this is what's coming out and this is how you read it for the people who want to read and get every issue and i think the whole idea that marvel had as well and and, and like jonathan and, and and marvel was we can sell these books in different ways like some people will just be like i only want to read new new mutants mm -hmm. nothing else and maybe i'll read the main x title x-men title as well and that's it so you've got your series collections where you just buy your new mutants volume that comes out every i don't know every four to six months um you've got people who buy floppies they buy every single thing 
And then you've got people who want to just read the whole thing and not really have to worry about, oh shit, I missed an issue. And, missed something, and then right. you get, yeah. And yeah. so this is basically like anthology style. Every, every I think we're, we're, these, these come out like monthly, monthly of, or, or, or month and a half by monthly, you get like a new volume and you're basically up to speed. You're not missing anything. Yeah. 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 So good. for those, that was kind of like, okay, develop, develop a packaging style for those books, for those books. And then we've got the oversight hardcovers. So there's a system, everything is designed from the base X slightly reformatted to fit each kind of silo, each pillar, mm -hmm. uh, each collection. Um, and then, you know, you just flashed up the, 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 the X-Men X display typeface. Yeah. And that was basically, that was, that wasn't asked. That was, that was me basically thinking, okay, if we're going to design logos, it would be nice if all the logos look the same. If yeah. there's like, if we're really going to push a line wide relaunch, you want to make sure that every single book is like, oh yeah, that's part of the same family. So I thought I'm going to put some effort in up front, design a typeface. And then I can use that typeface and design every single logo that has to be created. And each logo, I can then go in and modify things and make it unique to that individual book. Sure. So big X-Men logo, grungy Wolverine logo, kind of corporate-y X-Court logo. You know, it, it gives that flexibility. And for the, and for the Marvel's in-house design team as well, they've got like, they've got this whole toolkit that they can use for like marketing and, and, and any kind of X related design that they need to do. It's did all you, there. Did you develop a standards guidelines for them? Not really. We didn't okay. really, we didn't really have the time for, for that. That would have been a whole different uh, ball game. But I mean, in so far, like the standards guidelines are the master templates. Yeah files for each for each book and i think like all the data pages that 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 appear in in the um in the single issues i mean in in the stories that's something that i helped develop with jonathan very early on but i'm not really involved in those in in creating those in 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 the stories because i mean right. that would be that would be a full-time job on its own oh for sure and it's kind of like, you know, establishing the grids. Yeah. Choosing the typefaces, the hierarchy, um, and basically the, 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 the graphic language and the formatting and everything. And then Jonathan did a whole bunch, like he did, I mean, Jonathan developed the Krakoan typeface. Mm -hmm. um, and he, he kind of like, you know, developed the kind of the look of all the graphics and the diagrams, like I didn't do any of that. I kind of created shapes and positioning and, and, and kind of a general kind of baseline of how things can look. Right. And then Jonathan did his thing with it. And then we went kind of, you know, back and forth to establish that, that kind of design language. And now that's established and, you know, off it goes. Anyone can, any, anyone can pick it up. And it was also this thing like it needs to be very simple and very adaptable because at some point people are going to start taking liberty. You know how it is. Yeah, for sure. is a, here, these are the guidelines. Follow these. And then a few months later, it's like, what happened to the guidelines? Oh, yeah, no. Um, the, the, the kind of like the, 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 the office in, in, in uh, the other states wanted to do something completely different. Yep. And so that's, that's the kind of like the idea was let's, this, let's create these data pages as something that's easy to maintain and easy to evolve. And, you know, Jay Bowen is doing an amazing, like he's one of, of Marvel's in-house designers mm -hmm. and he's doing an amazing job on like, you know, the new destiny of X books we kind of updated the, 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 the kind of like the title, the double spreads title page. So he's taking, taking that design language and kind of evolving it for each kind of step. 
in in the kind of the narrative. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, it's great. I mean, it's such a, it's such an extensive project, you know, in the in the sense. And I mean, you have to be really, really pleased and proud. Um, oh yeah, it's been it's been. A, I mean, I can't say it's been an amazing thing because it, it, it's still so ongoing. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's it, no, it's it's like it's a really amazing project um, to to be involved with. And you know, I still you know today i i del i just delivered just before we we jumped on on our chat i uploaded my design variant cover for the upcoming exterminators um yeah well, so so did is it this I'm, am i correct that you did this or is this yours yes yeah. yes yes yeah it's great yeah so so i've been it's it's really i mean it's really cool that i've had the opportunity to mm -hmm. do like actual covers for <laughs> for most yeah. of the most of the books there's a few there's a few titles i've missed out on um but it's like this this was a fun kind of set because i thought oh for the for the the destiny of x launch books the five five new books i thought i was gonna do i'll do it like a connecting variant like instead of art it'll just be like a pattern of like the x symbol yeah. kind of wallpaper and then layer on the kind of like the graphic devices that i've been doing since the since the the first um design variant i did for i think x-men one back in 2019. Well, it's it's a, i mean it's a great it's a great touch and i mean it's so like i mean i love getting this like i love it when there's sort of like a very just a design treatment for a cover because it's not it's not common because listen the comic books are yeah like, yeah somebody drawing those comics and they like to do the covers but it's such a it's such a treat when you really do just get a designed cover and it, regardless if there's illustration or not it's really quite a quite a uh, you know a surprise so this to me leads into another great project structure system and that is for oh yes that's yeah. coming in uh september i think yeah it's so it's so cool um I, you know, going all the way back to my mother's hatred of word balloons, um, I love how you made the uh, the best of uh, 2000 AD a word balloon, an incredibly stylized word balloon. It, yeah. it, it, I love, I love that approach. It's so beautiful. Um, so had this project come like in you know into your radar, and what was the? What was... Um, it, uh... So this this project actually happened way before COVID hit because the okay. I, it, wow. was, it was supposed it was supposed to the first issue was so basically um, to backtrack I I know a few people at Rebellion Publishing the publishers of 2080 and they just reached out and like well we're doing this new book we're we're um because 2000 ad in judge dread and like that universe is a is like a, a british institution it, it has it has it has been around for decades and decades yep. um and it's been like it, it's been visible in the american market but it's not it's not had a massive footprint and i think through the decades, there's always been like a sprinkling of 2000 AD titles, mainly Judge Dredd titles or like crossovers that have kind of kept that character and 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 that universe kind of present in, in the American market. So the whole idea of best of 2000 AD was we're going to do like a new anthology style series specifically for the American market. So we're going to we're going to commission all these American comic book artists mm -hmm. um, or, or I'll rephrase it like artists that are known in the American comic book industry to create covers for the uh, for the anthology. And then we'll basically do this kind of like epic mixtape of like completely new stories, greatest hits, a bit of both to really introduce the, the 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 breadth of what 2080 has to offer but basically because i knew the guys um they invited me i think a year before i started working on 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 the 
on the book to the 40th anniversary celebration of 2000 AD. It was like, it was a kind of like a one day convention um, cool. to kind of celebrate the publisher. And they had me do a, they had me host a panel about on the design of 2000 AD. Okay. And to be, the thing is having, you know, grown up in Belgium, I didn't, I knew of 2000 AD, but it was because I got translated comics of American editions. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So I never really had the, the actual weekly magazine yep. until like, you know, I started going to comic book stores and they imported it. So I was kind of this outsider talking about like the design of 2000 AD, not really knowing not, I mean, it wasn't the thing like I hadn't grown, like everyone in the audience had grown up with 2000 AD. And I was mm -hmm. kind of like, well, yeah, I guess, blah, right. blah. Like knowing the bare basics. I mean, I obviously, um, I know that Ryan Hughes, who was in the panel, um, amazing designer, used to work, do a lot of design for 2000 AD. So 2000 AD actually has a really big pedigree in terms of like, graphic design and publication design. And so a year or two later, I get invited to like, we're going to do best of 2018. We really want to do something completely different and something modern. So hi, Tom, can you, are you interested? And it, it was kind of like a, a little bucket list project as well, because oh, this is cool. This is like, I can do something for, you know, a British institution. Yeah. So you know i went to went to their their offices i had a i was allowed into the um temperature controlled archives to nice look at like you know original art they have lying around like old issues um that was amazing and then we kind of developed the 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 identity for for the title and then the kind of like the whole publication package. Yeah. So like credits pages, interiors, that kind of stuff. Um, and then we had an issue schedule or they had an issue scheduled for a free comic book day. I think that came out and then uh, COVID happened and then everything was postponed and yeah. they've now come back and rather than do a run of 12 issues, it's been condensed in six like proper trade paperback volumes okay. um a few hundred pages i think to really like you know come it's it's basically like just condense it and packs yeah. a bigger punch and so they're they're being um it's finally being released i mean they just had another um free comic book day issue and it's now being released i think in september it's amazing it's amazing I mean, and I, you know, and I mean, you're so right. I mean, the, the 2000 AD held this sort of like, so, you know, I, you know, going to art college in New York City, you know, in the 80s, um, you know, it was, we had access to more comics than most people did, but they were yeah, st yeah. still weren't as commonplace. And, you know, so if you were strolling around the dormitories and someone had a copy of a 2000 AD, you're like, oh, that person's got some cool taste, you know, and, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you would always kind of go look around in the comic shops for the magazine size boxes to see if they had those things because mm. maybe you might find some Brian Boland artwork that you hadn't seen before or something. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was super exciting. So, um, and but but I think by and large, aside from one interesting and one good Judge Dredd movie, where you know we have very little sort of <laughs> to uh, to the character in the in the in yeah, the, yeah, yeah. It's, and then anything beyond that is just a mystery. Yeah, you I know. think, uh, I mean, the whole idea, like uh, 2000 AD has always had like a little bit of a subversive edge to oh, it. Yeah. I was like a little, a little bit dangerous. And it's like, oh, cool. It's like, it's like the stuff every kid wants to read and every kid is reading, but at the same time, it's like, oh, shh, yeah. don't. And, and I think when we're when we were doing 2008 the best of 2008 when we were in in the design process the whole idea was like not necessarily try to be like you know dangerous and and 
that kind of oh you're not supposed to read this but tap into like today's kind of culture and 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 design like zeitgeist almost mm -hmm. and yeah. and do something and like kind of show like you know 2080 and dread is still as contemporary and relevant as it was when it first came out in like you know the 70s for sure yeah i mean like we i mean <laughs> Yeah, the, the 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 culture the culture hasn't shifted too far, you know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. we're I think we're all still sort of in that sort of like, can't we just have like some civility and some normalcy in this world? But no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, so we get Judge Dredd and we get slain and we get all these like rat these killer characters. So it's it's cool. Um, and I I think it's a system. It's it, it is absolutely just beautiful. It's smart. It's, you know, I say the word sophisticated a lot, but it is. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'll take I, it. I'll take okay. it. No, I mean it's it, it's it's great. You should put it. You should definitely get your mom to put that up on the uh, fridge. Um, that's oh a, yeah, it's, it's a winner. Um, yeah, I, I can't I can't wait to see it on the shelves. I can't wait for like the friends of mine who are huge 2080 fans like to be able to because I know they're going to get it because they want you know to get the thing they missed. Um, yeah. Yeah, I saw a little like um, um, Owen, who Owen Johnson, who is the uh, uh, one of the drivers behind the 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 anthology, sent me like a little video uh, today of the first copies that came back from print, and he's got a nice little spot gloss on the on oh. the on the trade dress. So Sweet. it's it's really it's really going to be like a, a book and a series of books to 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 get. Let's hear it. Let's hear it for the, the comic companies using spot varnishes. I mean, mm. seriously, like it, it's not a huge investment, but man, it makes a huge difference, especially yep. when treated well. Um, so yeah, well, good for you for getting a spot varnish. Look what you, you did a good, <laughs> good it, was, it wasn't, I, I didn't, I didn't know. Um, yeah. I think I, yeah. They've got good people there. Well, it's like the class. It's it's also that that's the classic designers thing. Like you, if you can't get the budget like paid to you, like you try to get everything you can on the page, you know. So then you're like, mm -hmm. well, you can't pay me this much. Can we get these things on the? You know, can we get you know a couple custom colors? And people, they're like, yeah, I guess so. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah like that's do the, that, that, that has been that has been my tactic with all the the the, the X Men hard covers. It's like I'm gonna do a series, and every cover will have like metallic pantone colors sure. metallic or fluorescent pantones and you're like yeah fine you've got two colors got two extra extra spot colors per per book yeah i mean listen there's stations on that press might as well use them you know yeah <laughs> that's uh you know listen you know i mean it doesn't take that much longer to clean those blankets well so just fine use them yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, that's great so um you're also just released. Uh, I, I, if I'm wrong, you did you just released, but you have a course out there right now, a design. I course. do. I do have a design course out. And um, I've been running your the the the. Oh yeah, I see. I'm seeing very good. So you can you can definitely get a link to that, but I want Tom. Uh, Tom, I want you to kind of just give an overview of what that is if anybody hasn't seen the video for it. But I don't know. So um, for the audience. Click the link below. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's um, basically I've done a design course uh, on the uh, Domestica platform. So Domestica is an online uh, teaching platform, which is full of amazing content um, for creatives to learn anything from creative knitting to making paper to developing websites to learning 3D to designing comics. Um, they even uh, uh, creating art, doing everything. It's a very, it's an amazing, vast and, and wealthy, content wealthy platform. And so they invited me to do a course on designing for fiction. That's the name of my course. And in the course, um, I basically go through my whole creative process um, from the initial idea, learning how to set a project brief, learning how to create mood boards and create references for your imaginary clients to actually going through the actual design process from basically sketching to final design output. And in the course, I've basically taken one of my old uh, stories that I've done for um, 
Liam Sharp's mentor books way, way back in the mid 2000s and kind of looked at it like, how, how would I do that now today? Um, but basically the course is for anyone that wants to learn how to use storytelling as a, as a tool um, to create amazing brand identities and visual identities. So you can, you can look, you can take that course. It's a fixed price. Once you, it's basically you pay once you have access forever. You can do the courses anytime you want any, you know, there's no time limit, no pressure. You can just watch the videos if you want. It's, uh, it would be amazing. I've been, I've been doing, I've been in this business for, you know, long, long enough. And I, I mean, I watched the video. I'm like, I want to take that class. Like it, it, it's, it's, I good. Mean, it's, <laughs> it's like, I mean, like there, there is nothing, there's nothing more fun than sort of being involved in some, you know, some sort of structured, you know, design thing, whatever it is, you know, if you're, Hey, yeah, you're, yeah, yeah. you're going to take a master class in some typography over a weekend, or you're going to just get in some sort of logo designing competition with your design buddies, you know, over some beers, you know, like, you know, they're just like, all right, you have one minute to design a logo randomly from this, you know, from this phone. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, it's, but all this stuff is great, but like, I mean, everything in that course that you've described and that's in the video and the link will be in the doobly-doo. Um, it's just amazing, man. Like it's, I mean, so if you could give, aside from taking the course and hiring mm -hmm. you, <laughs> these are the two things you can't say. Um, what, like, what would be the thing? Like, if someone was saying, "Hey, I need, I, I need to design my own trade dress for my in, indie comic," um, like, what yeah. would you think like that, like they did the key thing they should keep in mind when doing that. Um, the key thing to keep in mind is hire me. Why did I, um, I said you I can't think, say that? Oh, oh, cheater. Um, that's it's a good question. Like, I think the advice that I give people is to try and stay away from tropes. Good one. Um, for example, if you you know if you're if you're designing say a fantasy comic, there's always I think. I'm using that because it's a very easy, easy example to, to yeah. make my point. Use there is or a sword or an ax. Yeah. And there is the kind of, there is, there is a, a kind of like a reflex of like, it needs to look like Lord of the Rings or yeah. it needs to look like, um, it needs to have like beveled metal edges and it needs to be, um, it needs to be like chiseled out of rock kind mm -hmm. of thing. It needs to be of the world. And I think, I think there is there are ways of creating a logo that fits that narrative and that storyline, but it doesn't need to. It can be like we touched on earlier. It can be all white. It can be stylized. It yep. can be anything you want and you can kind of feel free to like explore beyond the stuff that you you've seen around you because it's you need to find the balance between oh people recognize this as a fantasy story but it looks different like all the others and maybe that's why i'm going to pick this up because yeah. it looks it looks different and it looks interesting yeah i mean that's i mean a, a great a great example of doing that um and, and i'm not citing a specific example but go to the bookstore and go into a book section yes. And, yes. look at, look at, and go look at all the titles of the books because they're all organized in subjects. So you're going to mm -hmm. go, okay, and it doesn't matter if it's science fiction or detective books or, or fantasy, you're going to get to see the the how they handle the dressing in that logo. And you're exactly, going to go, exactly. get that. and certain ones will pop out and you'll go, oh, this is amazing. And it doesn't look like the rest, but it really has a great vibe. I'm going to offer a bonus answer on top of yours. Or below yours, depending what it is. But the bonus answer that I'm going to give is legibility. Make sure. Oh it's yeah. Cool. Because cool doesn't tell you what it is. So that's my. And a good test for that is look at how comics are displayed on the comicsology listings, mm. and see what stands out in terms yeah. of size shape color texture whatever yeah. thumbnail is now i mean we're we're you know like you're down to a thumbnail now it's not like it's yeah. not 
a person in a store looking at the real sized object. It is a thumbnail. That's a good point. And the thing is, if you if you can if you can make it pop on a thumbnail, it'll work on an actual physical cover on any a shot. Size. Yeah, at any size. Yeah, that's yeah. So yeah, but I I, I like I, I like that. That's a uh, yeah. D don't don't fall the tropes. Don't fall for them. I mean, no. they're, they're they're there, but you know what? Play with the tropes. Come up with a come up with a spin on the trope. You know, it, it's a it's a great exercise, and you know, you'll end up being much happier. And and another another point of reference, sorry, that I think is very useful for people that are just kind of trying to find their way or like looking for inspiration is like just just look at video games and look at like TV shows, look at title sequences, and you'll notice how how different and varied and modern and cool mm -hmm. they can they can look without necessarily being heavy on on tropes and cliches yeah well, that's really that's a really good point so aside from why don't you tell people just in case they're listening not look not looking at the screen but like where can people find you tom uh, they can find me everywhere online. You just need to Google Hello Miller and you'll come to the right space. I am um, on at Hello Miller on most social networks, on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Tumblr, I LinkedIn. Yeah. Even um, everything. Everything is in that link tree uh, description that you that you see scrolling past past yourself. Um, I've got a website, hellomiller.com, which is kind of like a little showcase of uh, some work that I've done. That's it. You'll That's find great. me. You'll find me every day on on social. Yeah. No, you're you. I am in the ether. You are, man. You're you're very fun. To, you're fun to engage with on Twitter. So if you uh, if you like engaging with a, a smart and clever person, Tom's a good person to do that with. Okay. <laughs> what do you want? You, you're gonna get one smart or clever. Which one do you want? Uh, I'll go with smart. Oh, quick book recommendation. If you don't have it, see if you can find it. It's called a smile in the mind. It's a design book. Oh yeah. Oh, you have it. Yeah. I like to, I like I recommend. Have, yes. It's it, it, if you, of course, if of course I have it. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, if you were, if you're a person who wants to design a logo, get the book, a smile in the mind, it is really possibly one of the best thinking books about yeah you know, designing logos so um all right well then that's yeah, seminar over um, <laughs> um <laughs> class dismissed yeah class dismissed tom thank you so much for uh spending the time and talking because I, I mean this was just chock full of really great talk and discussion and ideas man um likewise thanks. it was it was a lot of fun cool and um yeah go find tom online um go make comic books go make anything just do it and enjoy it.